Okay, so here's another one where we want to find the zeros and multiplicities. So uh, on the test, we're always going to have the correct number of blanks for how many zeros that there are. So because there's only two pieces on this one, that's why there's only two blanks there for uh, the zeros. So we'll start with those. A zero is what makes what number will make that first part equal to a zero inside the parentheses. So negative one will be the answer for that one. And then there'll be a, a three will make this part equal to zero. The multiplicities are the powers that are attached to each of the factored pieces. So if you don't see anything there, we know it's going to be a power of 1. So the negative 1 comes from this piece here that has a power of 1, so that means the multiplicity is 1. For the second piece, the power is 2. That's your multiplicity for the second piece. That's the factor where the 3 came from. Okay, so now we want to do y-intercept. Now do the y-intercept. Uh, that means that your x is equal to zero. So don't just assume that because it's zero, automatically the whole thing is gonna be zero. That's actually not the case with this problem. We're gonna put a zero in for each of the x's. Uh, so you're gonna get negative zero plus one, zero minus three squared, and then we're gonna multiply uh, that together. So I'm gonna simplify first. I get negative one inside there, this is negative 3, but I'm squaring it, so I actually get a 9 for the second piece. When I multiply those together, get negative 9 for uh, the y-intercept. Uh, and so that's what you would get. So again, don't just assume every time that it's going to be 0. you got to actually plug a 0 in for x and work it out. Uh, next, we're going to do the degree. The degree is always the sum of the multiplicity. So if we add these two together, we get 3. The max number of turning points is always going to be 1 less than your degree which means that's going to be equal to two. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to find the behavior at each of the zeros. Okay, so uh, hopefully you have this work here. I'm gonna go ahead and erase it so you have some space down below to do the, uh, the behaviors. Now, the way we do this is you're going to, we'll do the behavior at each of the zeros. Let's do the one at negative one uh, first. What you do is you put a negative one in for all the x's except for the one that gave you the zero in the first place. In other words, you don't want to put negative one into where you get originally got the zero from because otherwise it zeroes everything out and the whole thing is zero. Your behaviors are never going to be equal to y equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to put negative one into not the first one, but I'm going to put negative one into the second piece here. So I get negative x plus, so I'm just going to leave that exactly the way it is. And then I'm going to put negative one into the second x here, negative 1 minus 3, and I'm squaring that. Uh, so then we're, then we're going to do some simplifying. So you get negative x plus 1. This part here, you get negative 4 squared will be uh, 16, just like that. So if you want to leave your answer as negative 16 times x plus 1, it's okay to leave it like that. If you'd like to multiply that out because it's a linear factor, that's okay too. So 16x minus 16. Uh, would be the behavior. So I would take either this answer or that one, either one uh, would be fine. Now let's think about what kind of shape this looks like. Uh, it's a negative slope, which means that it's going to look something like that. It'll be a, a line that slants to the, to the left. Uh, it's a line because you have x to the first power and because the first number is negative, it has negative slope, so it leans to the left. So that takes care of uh, that one. So next, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. I'm going to do the behavior now. Uh, at 3. Okay, so let's do that one. So if we do the behavior at uh, 3, so again I'm going to put the 3 into the first one, but I don't want to put a 3 into the second one because if I put a 3 into the second factor, I get a 0 and the whole thing cancels out. So I'm just going to put 3 into the first one only. So I get negative, I have 3 plus 1, and then I'm going to leave this exactly the way it is. Just leave it as x minus 3 squared. I can simplify the first part, that's going to give me a 4, so I have negative 4 x minus 3 squared. If you have a square or a cube, you don't have to multiply that one on a test, it's okay to leave your answer uh, in that form. So it's going to be negative 4 x minus 3 squared, and I'm going to leave it like that. Now for the shape of this one, this is a square, and there's a negative in front, which means that it is a parabola shape. But because there's a negative in front, that means it's going to 
looks like this. So that means that where the gra when the graph crosses that negative one, it's going to look like this line slanting to the left. And when the graph crosses at three, it's going to look like this uh, upside down parabola. So this is important uh, as far as graphing it. So we're going to take all this information that you should have written down and we're going to plot all these points and we're going to get the, uh, the correct shape of this one. So again, this one, don't worry about expanding it. You can leave it in the form just like that. Okay, let's take a look at the graph. So I'm going to leave the behaviors up here. And I'm going to erase this part here. You can go back, rewind the video uh, to get that again later. But let's go ahead and, and put everything all together on the graph. So first of all, we have the intercepts. Uh, so of course it crosses at our zeros that we had before. So the graph is going to cross at negative 1 and also at positive 3. So I'll just go ahead and label those. The graph also goes through negative 9. So there's negative 9 uh, right there. So when I do that, that part first. Next I'm going to draw in the little behavior, the sketches we have. We have a behavior at uh, so here, uh, this one, the, uh, the line here that was slanting at uh, negative 1. So it means we have a line that kind of slants something like this. The other one is the upside down parabola. That one was the one that went through uh, at 3. So we have these two pieces uh, so far. Now, besides the behavior at each of the zeros, we also have one last piece. Uh, and this is called end behavior. Now, the, gra the uh, test itself doesn't, is not going to ask you for end behavior, but sometimes it's important to have that one so we know which direction, how to finish the graph here. So for end behavior, we have to look at the degree. Now, the degree that we had for this one was degree 3, and so that means that my n, my n is the highest power degree, that's odd. Okay, so next, we have to figure out uh, the a of n value. In other words, it's the, the coefficient that comes in front. If we were to take and expand all this and multiply it all out, what kind of coefficient would it be, positive or negative? Now, if I just take this the way it is, this would be a positive x squared. I'd be multiplying it by an x. That's positive. But then I have a negative in front like that. So if I were to multiply all that out together, out my, I would have something to the third power and the number in front of that would have to be negative. So that's what this a, a sub n represents that I talked about in the notes. That's less than zero, which means we want to take a look at the different patterns we have for n behavior that were mentioned in the notes. Uh, so if n is odd and a of n is less than zero, we end up having uh, this type of situation. So we have the graph is going to go up and to the left, it's going to do something in the middle, and it's going to go down uh, and to the right. So that's basically what happens if n is odd and a of n is less than zero. So if I, if I put that information on the graph here, that means I get something that looks like this. And so now the whole graph is almost complete. So the graph's going to come down and go through here. So it's actually going to come down all the way, go through the zero. So this is probably a little bit steeper, so it's probably going to look more like that. Uh, it's going to go down and go through the negative 1, or negative 9 rather, and it's going to go back up through this one. It'll go through this little curve and then it'll come down and look something like that. So the graph will, has basically these two bends in it. The two bends represent turning points, so it has two turning points uh, like we predicted before. Uh, and this is what your completed graph will look like. Uh, so for some of these that, that go up to a certain point and go down, I'm not looking for the exact detail as to how high or how low the graph actually goes. So in fact, if you take a look at the answer key on this problem, I have it where the graph actually does, goes slightly below the negative 9 and it goes back up. However, I'm not expected for you to show all that detail on the test because you can't know that unless you use either calculus or make a table of values. I just want the overall general sketch of the graph itself. And so that, this would be enough to show that. This would be enough detail to show the turning points uh, just like that. But the actual graph itself does actually go down a little bit further, uh, curves and goes back up. But again, if you had this as your answer, that's perfectly okay. And again, I don't expect to know exactly how high or how low it goes um, in this class for pre-calculus.